Hi, I am Lisa Weiss. I'm a dermatology PA in the Atlanta area and an advisory board member for Elevate Dermatology. I am here with Dr. Treat and Dr. Shao, and we are here to talk about surgical versus medical management of HS. So thank you both for being here. Um, just a quick few questions for you. How do you choose surgical versus medical management for HS? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think that, you know, when we think about HS, we really think about combination therapies. Um, typically patients need more than one type of treatment to really optimize. So I find that a lot of patients can benefit from both. For me, when I think about lesions that can benefit from surgical procedures, I think about ones that tend to be more fixed. Um, you know, maybe one area that's persistently just giving a patient problems, even though we've medically managed it to the best of our ability. Also, it's really important to set expectations for patients. For example, with those tunnels and sinus tracts that we see, they're not gonna melt away with the medical treatments that we have now. So really in order to help like decrease the disease burden in that area, it's important to do some procedures, whether it's local de-roofing or wide local excision, or if it's a large area, perhaps referring to one of our plastic surgery colleagues, um, that's where I think that you, know, you can have good benefit there. And I think one key point is to maintain medical management while they're undergoing these surgical procedures. That's a great pearl, thank you. Yeah, people tend to flare um, in new areas, and so if you have medical therapy that's kind of got everything, at least preventatively, um, and then you kind of use surgical management for the things that are the most active, that have been the most recalcitrant, I think that was beautiful, but. Thank you guys. Anything else that you think that APPs should know about managing HS in today's world? I think in kids, um, one thing that I would consider would be do you need a culture in the beginning? I am totally aware that HS should be culture negative, but every once in a while we see people who actually have staph bronchiolosis and they're at the very, and, and you're kind of eager to make a diagnosis of HS in a 12 or 13 year old because they have a couple of nodules um, or they have a couple of um, pustules in the armpit. You just want to kind of make sure that it is actually HS. Um, and so if you have someone who has like one spot or two spots, or they're a little bit unusual, you may want to consider culturing or looking for double comedones or kind of like the clinical signs to make sure that it truly is HS at the very beginning. I'm not saying you have to culture everyone, but um, maybe in the very beginning, if, if you're not sure whether someone has HS, a culture can be very helpful. And it's helpful for parents too, because they assume that, you know, you're going to be like, oh, this is the antibiotic that we use for this, you know, draining, weeping thing. Absolutely. Anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I think, um... You know, I just think it's a really exciting time because HS has devastated so many lives for so long and people have been suffering for so long from this. And my message would be that, you know, we can, as providers, can make such a big difference in these patients' lives just by taking the time to really set up that rapport from the start and let them know it's going to be a treatment journey that we're going on with them. And, um, you know, we just got our second FDA approval in HS and um, you know, secukinumab in addition, adding on to the adalimumab that we've had. And I'm hoping we just get more treatment options um, and that it can be really fulfilling to take care of these patients. Thank you both so much. And thank you for joining us today.